a very good morning uh, to all uh, dear brothers uh, and sisters in christ we thank our heavenly father and our lord and savior jesus christ uh, for giving uh, it as an opportunity to share uh, wonderful words of life dear brethren uh, today we are going to see a parable uh, the parable of the good samaritan so we all know and uh, we would have heard this story uh, since our uh, childhood when we have visited the churches uh, or attended the sunday class so several times sir but today we are going to see what's the real uh, uh, meaning of the parable we know very well that uh, in the parable uh, you see a man was uh, traveling and on the way some of the robbers uh, came and uh, you see uh, bit him and uh, stole uh, all of his goods and he was left alone on the road but as he was left alone on the road side uh, many passers by came especially first the priest and then the levy the both of the persons uh, did not even bother to see whether the person was alive or uh, dead did not even uh, think uh, to help uh, the wounded uh, man so after this uh, there was a samaritan who was passing on the same way and he saw this uh, wounded man and he had pity and sympathy on him and he uh wiped all his wounds and uh poured oil uh, on the wound he gave him little bit of uh, wine uh, to strengthen him and later on took him on a donkey you see on his own ass uh, on which he was traveling you see and uh, brought him to a inn and when he was brought him uh, to the inn he told the innkeeper to take care of uh, at uh, this uh, wounded man and he gave him uh, two pennies he told uh, whatever uh, extra is needed uh, please spend it when i return again you see i will give you more so this is the uh, parable so before uh, going to the parable dear brethren uh, we need to understand why actually jesus spoke this parable isn't it see whenever jesus spoke a parable he never spoke uh, without any reason so there is lot of reason if jesus uh, has spoken a parable now what is the reason if you read uh, in uh, luke uh, 10 chapter verse 25 uh, we come to know actually what actually happened there you see we you know very well that uh, usually uh, there was a, a friction uh, between uh, our lord's ministry and many people uh, opposed uh, him especially the pharisees the sadducees uh, the lawyers uh, and the high priest so similarly here also uh, the lawyer were actually opposing christ and uh, they were intending uh, to catch hold of christ uh, in his words and that is the time that a lawyer came before our master and asked him a question what did he ask let us read luke 10:25 luke 10:25 <clears throat> and behold a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him saying master what shall i do to inherit eternal life you see the lawyer came and stood uh, before the master in front of everybody and uh, the question he asked was that what shall i do to inherit uh, eternal life uh, and the motive uh, of his question was uh, if you see dear brethren it was not uh, with the intention uh, you see to understand uh, uh, you see uh, the real uh, truth from the bible the verse clearly says you see he stood up and tempted him saying uh, he wanted to you see uh catch hold of jesus in his words to see if he's going to speak something wrong and uh, immediately you see uh, catch hold of him but jesus uh, we know very well he was filled with the holy spirit he could uh, by seeing a man he could completely analyze what was his real intention and we all know the lawyer 
See, lawyer means who? The one who is expert in the law, who is very thoroughly equipped with each and every intricate details of the law. Today also we have lawyers in the court now. You see, in the before the judge who present the case, the advocates, the lawyers. Who are these? Huh? These are the people who study the law actually. So similarly, during days of Jesus also, they were lawyers. Huh? Who are these? If you see, they were expert in the law that was given by Moses. They knew in and out of the law. Now here, a lawyer who was supposed to know everything from the law, he came and questioned something out of the law. You see, and uh, we all know very well, you see, uh, why this lawyer is putting this question? We might wonder. We all know that uh, the character of a lawyer, you see, and uh, the Pharisees and Sadducees, they are only outward people. They just pretended to be very well, very good before everybody. You see, and uh, what was the, uh, uh, what do you say, the perspective of uh, uh, Jesus uh, about them? Matthew 23 24, 27, and 28. Matthew 23, 24, 27, 28. Ye blind guides which strain at a gnat and swallow a camel. Woe unto you, scribes, scribes and the Pharisees, hypocrite, hypocrites, for ye all are like unto whited sepulchre. <clears throat> which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are with, within full of dead men's bones and of all uncleanness. Even so, ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. Here, uh, Jesus uh, told uh, clearly about the character. They are uh, blind guides who are actually straining the gnat, uh, you see. But uh, they used to swallow the camel itself, uh, it seems. Uh. And they were called as hypocrites. Uh, they are compared to whitewashed sepulchre, the grave. It looks very beautiful in the outside, but inside are all full of filth and all those things. Uh, they are beautifully decorated outward only to show off, uh, just to pretend and show that they are very holy people. They, were, they considered themselves as to be very, very righteous people. You see, but inside, they were actually not as a people. And one such person, a lawyer, who was like this, a hypocrite, came and questioned our Lord Jesus, what he has to do, uh, you see, to inherit eternal life. Actually, he should be knowing, because he is expert in the law. Now, Jesus knew the reason why he was asking the question. Now, what did Jesus reply? Read verse 26. Ah. Luke 10, 26. He said unto him, What is written in the law? How readest thou? See, <laughs> Jesus, uh, instead of answering, he put a question saying, He said, What is written in the law? You are a lawyer, no? You should be knowing everything, no? You are the expert in the law. Instead of, uh, you see, answering the question, you are simply pretending to put some questions to me, which actually you know very well. That's the reason he, he said, what is written in the law? You are a lawyer. How are you reading the law? You should be expert in the law. You might be knowing everything. Then why are you asking me this question? Have you not read uh, the law properly? Thus, uh, that was uh, the answer, uh, you see, uh, given by Jesus. Now, immediately, you see, now, the lawyer, uh, huh, simply what happened in front of everybody? You see, his uh, face uh, faded out. Uh, it was an embarrassing situation for him. For him. Uh, immediately, he answered uh, what actually is written in the law to attain eternal life. Uh, in verse 27, he said, uh, uh, he answering said, Thou shall love the Lord, thy God, with all thy heart. With all the soul and with all the strength and with all the mind and the neighbor as thyself. You see, now he clearly understood huh, that he has no way to escape. He had to answer. Otherwise, you see, the people will think uh, that this lawyer doesn't know even the basic things uh, of the law. So hence he, he himself answered from the law that you should love the Lord with all thy heart and neighbor as thyself. Uh, 
Jesus replied him now saying in verse 28, you have said correct. And he said unto him, though I have answered right, you have given the right answer, this do and thou shall live. Jesus said, okay, you have answered correctly. Now what you have said, you go and do the same. Now, in front of everybody, you see, Jesus brought out the answer from the mouth of the lawyer. Now, uh, the lawyer was completely shamed before uh, everybody. Now, he could not just walk away like that only. He wanted to show that he was some, somewhat uh, a great person, a wise person. Hence, uh, he put one more question to Jesus. Now, what was this question? Read verse 29, sister. Luke 10, 29. But he, willing to justify himself, said unto Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Ah, see, now to justify himself, as if uh, he's very a very correct person, he wanted to really eagerly know more about the law. He said, Okay, now who is my neighbor? That is the time, dear brethren, Jesus took the opportunity to tell who is actually every man's neighbor and is told this parable that is recorded to us in Luke 10 chapter verse 30 to 35. Now, what is the parable? You see, what actually happened in the parable? You see, what is the meaning of the parable? So, we will study now. You see, but then we know very well when Jesus came uh, at the first advent in Israel, there were actually two types of people uh, who were living there. The Pharisees, the Sadducees, the lawyers, uh, the scribes, uh, the priests, uh, the levies, uh, and high priest. They were all uh, the upper class of people. They considered all the other class of people as a very low and uh, they dealt very cheaply with them. Uh, they considered them as sinners uh, and they were never able to have some uh, fellowship uh, with them. They tried to behave as if uh, they are great persons, they are very holy person, they are very sinless persons, you see. And uh, uh, this is what uh, they actually practically did. They considered only the holy people and the righteous people, the great people, the wealthy people as their neighbors, uh, you see. And they saw very low about this, uh, you see, uh, the tax collectors, you see, the prostitutes, uh, you see, about uh, those days. Uh, you see, they never uh, considered the poor people, you see, as the neighbors. Uh, they considered them as unclean, not fit for the society. And Jesus took uh, this opportunity, you see, to teach to the lawyer and all the people, everybody, who actually is every man's neighbor. Therefore, you see, Jesus uh, tells uh, this parable. You see? Now, read, sister, verse 30. Luke 10, 30. <clears throat> and Jesus answering said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and fell among thieves, which striped him of his raiment, and wounded him, and departed, leaving him half dead. Okay. Here, Jesus tells uh, about a man who went from Jerusalem to Jericho. You see, he fell among the thieves. Uh, what did the thieves do? The thieves stripped him uh, of his uh, uh, raiment, the clothes, and completely uh, wounded him. Okay, if you see that, uh, did the thieves kill him? No, the thieves did not uh, kill him. You see, they left him half wounded, half dead, half murdered. You can say, you see, he's not completely murdered, but he's left alive, half dead. Uh, you see, a helpless condition. You see, next what happened? Verse uh, 31, sister. Huh? 10.31 And by chance there came down a certain priest that way. And when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. Uh, so on the way, you see, 
who came with him, sir? First, uh, a priest came. You see, priest. Uh, hmm? <coughs> who is the priest? Uh? Who works in the tabernacle? You see, who take care of all the uh, things uh, in the tabernacle? You see. Now he saw this man who is dead on the way. What did this man do? He never came nearby him also. He passed uh, by him on the other way, it seems. Uh, you see, thinking that uh, if he touches uh, this uh, dead body, you see, he will become unclean. You see, instead of seeing whether he is really alive or not, uh, uh, not even having sympathy, it just passed away by the other way, it seems. The other end, what is actually the duty of a priest? Uh, let us see what does the Bible say. Hebrews 5th chapter, verse uh, 1 and 2. Hebrew 1, 5, 1 and 2. For every high priest taken from among men is ordained for men in things pertaining to God that he may offer both gifts and sacrifices for sins. Who can have compassion on the ignorant and on them that are not that that are out of the way for that he himself also in compassed with infirmity. See, what is the duty of a priestess himself? To have compassion on the ignorant and on them that are out of the way. Why? Because he himself is compassed of that infirmity. His duty was to have sympathy on the Ignorant people, on the sinners, uh, to have compassion on them. But here, instead of showing compassion, mercy, love, grace, he just saw that person, he never bothered to see whether he is alive or dead, he just passed the other way. Now, next, what happened? Uh, next, uh, other person came with him, sir. And this person was a levy. Now, what did he do? He, do? he also passed by. You see, it? instead of helping uh, the wounded person, verse 32, he also passed by. Now, Levi, we know very well about a Levi. You see, Levi was actually uh, the, the tribe from which the priests were actually selected. So, here Levi also should have shown uh, sympathy. Isn't it? Uh, they are uh, God's chosen people. You see, they should have sympathy. But here... He also did not bother to see what actually has happened. Uh, dear brethren, so he passed by. So next, what happened is himself? Verse 33, sister. Huh? Verse 33. But a certain Samaritan, as he joined, came where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion on him. Uh, you see, but a Samaritan was journeying the same way. You see, dear brethren, when he saw him, what uh, was his reaction? He had compassion on him. He had sympathy on him. Dear brethren, and uh, what did he do? He came near the uh, wounded uh, person. And what did he do? Verse 34, sister. Huh? And went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine, and set him on his own beast and brought him to an inn and took care of him. Took care of him. Thank you. See, if you see here, that Samaritan, you see, not only had compassion, you see, he came to the, you see, the wounded person, he, you see, washed his wound, he bound his wound and poured oil and wine, you see, and set him his own beast, you see, we all know very well uh, the ass uh, or the donkey, only one person can sit on it. So, you see, the good Samaritan actually got down from the ass and they put uh, this wounded person on the ass and took him to in and took care of him, it seems, dear brethren. Such a wonderful thing, no? Dear brethren, we all know, you see, uh, after he came to the inn, what did you do? What did he tell to the innkeeper? Verse 35, sister. Uh. And on the morrow, when he departed, he took out two pennies and gave them 
to the host and said unto him take care of him and whatsoever thou spendest more when i come again i will repay thee you see he told to the innkeeper take care of him if anything extra is needed please spend it when i return this way again when i come again mark these words sir he said i will repay you dear brethren we know very well that uh, the relationship between the jewish people the israel people and the samaritan was not good the jewish people never had uh, communication or any relationship uh, with the samaritan we know very well this incident when uh, jesus was uh, feeling thirsty he sat at the well of jacob and uh, he desired uh, to have a little bit of water from the well then uh, a woman of samaria was there she was uh, actually drawing water from the well and that is the time uh, that uh, jesus asked her to give a little bit of water dear brethren and the woman was surprised how a jew is asking uh, water from the samaritan because they had no you see relation with the uh, samaritan read john 4 chapter verse 9 John four nine, the saint the woman of Samaritan Samaria, unto him, how is it that thou, being a Jew, askest to drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. See, okay, for the Jews have no dealings Over the with the Samaritan. You see, the Jews had no dealings with the Samaritan dear brethren. Moreover, we also know an incident about uh, where the disciples of uh, Jesus, once they were angry, they went to the village of Samaritan, you see, to get some food. But they were uh, never welcomed there. They did not receive them because the Samaritans had no relationship with the uh, Jewish people because they never treated them as their neighbor. So they were... You see, uh, maintaining the distance, uh, and it is mentioned in Luke nine, uh, chapter fifty-two and fifty-three. No need to read; just record it down for your uh, studies later. So, hence, uh, by telling in this uh, parable, when nobody held, uh, you see, and nobody helped uh, his own people, the Jewish people, you see, a Samaritan came and helped uh, such a person, and Jesus, after uh, telling. this uh, parable you see the story jesus questions the lawyer now tell me what do you think who is the neighbor see what was the reply of the lawyer verse 36 and 37 sister which now of these three think as though was a neighbor unto him that fell among the thieves and he said he that showed mercy on him then said jesus unto him go and do thou likewise see the lawyer had no other option to but to tell the truth uh, because if he had told something wrong or something else other people would have questioned because everybody clearly understood what's the intention what is the meaning of this parable and uh, who is really the neighbor so he had to say that one who showed mercy is actually the neighbor so jesus said you got the answer right now go and do the same go and do the same is what you are not doing the same you can please do the same dear brethren so this is how jesus uh, rebuked uh, the people there dear brethren so dear brethren now this is the parable now what is the meaning of the parable you so we know very well that jesus spoke in parable whenever he spoke he spoke in parable and without a parable he never spake anything to the crowd uh what was actually in this parables let us read matthew 13 chapter 34 and 35 matthew 13 34 35 all these things spake jesus unto the multitude in parables and without a parable spake he not unto them that is might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet saying i will open my mouth in parables i will utter things 
which have been kept a secret from the foundation of the world okay so jesus spoke in parables and in all these parables what did jesus uh, try to bring out if you see he clearly says that uh, the secrets uh, which have been kept uh, from the foundation of the world all these things jesus spoke in parables himself therefore therefore in this parables god's entire plan was hidden and jesus brought it to light it seems therefore you see the same question was asked uh, uh, by disciples to jesus now what did jesus uh, reply to them matthew 13 chapter sister verse 10 and 11 sister and later on 16 and 17 also yes brother and the disciples came and said unto him why speak as though unto them in parable he answered and said unto them because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven but to them it is not given 16 and 17 but blessed are your eyes for thy for they see and your ears for they hear for verily i say unto you that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which ye see and have not seen them and to hear those things which ye not hear them over oh, brother thank you sister so here uh, jesus clearly tells what is the secret in verse uh, 10 11 he said you see it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven you see dear brethren we all know that uh, kingdom of god we all have studied uh, the subject of daniel second chapter and seventh chapter where uh, the king saw a beautiful multi metallic uh, image whose image was struck by a stone at his feet and uh, the entire structure got uh, destroyed and afterwards uh, the stone which uh, spot the image it began to grow into a big mountain that it covered the entire earth uh, and daniel says that is the kingdom of god that is going to be established uh, on this earth the fifth universal empire it is a secret about this kingdom of heaven dear brethren we know that god's kingdom has got two parts uh, one a heavenly part you see other a earthly part uh, the heavenly part is composed of uh, two groups of people first of all it's primarily the church you see the christ along with the church the lakh and 44000 and also the great multitude and on, when coming to the earthly kingdom the visible face of the kingdom it is the ancient world is and the general world so these are the you see the kingdom the earthly kingdom and the heavenly kingdom So Jesus mentioned you saying this is the mystery of the kingdom of heaven that means in all these parables Jesus spoke something that is which is related to the church that is a kingdom of heaven part that means about the church hence uh, this parable has got lot of uh, lessons uh, you see for us uh, the church class of people who are going for the heavenly salvation okay Now, what is the meaning of this parable Now, who is this man why did he travel particularly from jerusalem to jericho why is it given clearly that only from jerusalem to jericho why he not given any other place why thief is mentioned why did he come in wound he should have stole everything and he should have killed him no he should have killed him why it is given that he is wounded now why levi is given priest is given now who is this samaritan why donkey is given they could have used a camel no why take it to the inn then why did the, the summit and told he gave only two coins he could have given more coins no or else he could have told i'll come and give you later why did not he tell all these things sir? and he told i will come again why did he use this particular verse dear brethren so what is the meaning of this one dear brethren we all know very well for the bible bible is his own dictionary if you need to you see understand the bible all the code has to be taken only from the bible not from google okay no google only bible you see now what is the meaning of this parable let us try to decode one by one 
first of all it says he traveled from where from jerusalem to jericho now now we should understand and see you see what is uh, this uh, meaning uh, of uh, you see uh, uh, what do you say uh, jerusalem to jericho why this jerusalem to jericho is given you see correct no any other place should have given no what is the meaning of jerusalem in the bible dear brethren jerusalem was a city of peace we know very well you see david uh, once uh, when he was uh, you see uh, cooped uh, by his own son absalom he left to jerusalem because he never wanted uh, bloodshed to happen in jerusalem he wanted a peace to establish a peace to be in jerusalem you see therefore jerusalem means a foundation of peace read hebrews 72 sister ha huh? hebrews 72 to whom also abraham gave a tenth part of all first being by interpretation king of righteousness and after that also king of salem which is king of peace see king of peace that means uh, jerusalem is foundation of peace therefore you should have observed usually the you see our uh, the muslim people they say salam alaikum you say salam alaikum means what peace be unto you you see so peace it's a city of peace okay now from jerusalem to where did he travel to jericho what do you mean of jericho in the bible jericho is a cursed city when the people of israel actually enter the land of canaan this jericho city was destroyed and it was never allowed to be built again god told if any man builds this uh, jericho again you see he shall lose his first born this was a cursed city it was never supposed to be built again joshua 6 chapter verse 26 sister 6 and 26 and joshua adjourned adjour- them at that time saying cursed be the man before the lord that riseth up and buildeth the city jericho he shall lay the foundation thereof in his first born and in the in his youngest son shall he set up the gates of he cursed be the man that raised and built up the city jericho so the end city is a cursed city now tell me who was the one who traveled from the city of peace to cursed city it was our father adam and in adam we all the entire man can dream brethren the traveled from the foundation of peace the peaceful condition of eden from that condition to the cursed condition the death condition but on the way when he was traveling what happened a thief attacked him with sims you see they stole him they took off his clothes they brethren so who are these thieves we all know very well these are the devil and the fallen angels who actually attacked mankind what did they rip him off you see first of all they took off his clothes what is the cloth you see the robe of righteousness they brethren you see in uh, garden of eden adam had no clothes so he was uh, never guilty of sin so he had the cloth uh, you see uh, where he can clearly without any hypocrisy he can approach god that cloth uh, of innocence uh, you see was completely taken off first uh, by this uh, you see a thief then what happened his health was taken you see man can lost all their health a beautiful edenic condition was lost you see the brain and uh, the wealth also you see god had uh, blessed adam that uh, blessed be you see the earth uh, you see have dominion over the fish of the sea you see and the fowl of the air and all of the things uh, you see so here the brain if you see uh, all these are the things uh, that uh, actually you see the mankind uh, lost uh, debran you see therefore uh, the peace uh, the joy the happiness uh, you see the man had fellowship with god he had everlasting life god had uh, given him the right to have 
the life giving fruits uh, you see and uh, the kingdom the dominion over the fish of the sea the fowl of the air the blessings uh, the perfection and holiness all these things was completely robbed from mankind and uh, did they kill him no you see mankind uh, was never killed by the devil uh, he left him after it uh, you see god put a curse upon adam isn't it we read that in genesis 3 17 to 19 no need to read it says you see because uh, you obeyed your wife's uh, voice cursed is the ground for thy sake uh, thorns and thistles you shall bring forth uh, in the sweat of thy brow thou shall eat all the days of thy life dear brethren so he was uh, in a cursed uh, position he was left in a cursed position dear brethren he was not completely dead on the spot uh, he never died uh, then and there itself uh, you see he was left half dead it nearly took nad and 30 years for adam to completely finish the broadway dear brethren and as man kind of was walking in this broadway first uh, who came with him sir huh the priest you see what is the meaning of a priest uh, you see this is the first thing which god gave for man kind to come out of this uh, sinful you see cursed condition that is the law the law had so much a power that if anybody kept the law they could have attained perfect life isn't it eternal life they could have come back from a sinful condition back to the perfection to god but what did the law do nobody could attain this perfect law and the law was a failure let us read galatians 3:12 and romans 3:20 uh. 12 and the law is not of faith but the man though does them shall live in them very good sir see the man that do the law shall live by the law okay romans 320 sister romans 320 therefore by the deeds of the law there shall no flesh be justified in his sight for by the law is knowledge of sin thank you sister see by the deeds of the law no man is justified you see so hence law uh, was a failure law could not help mankind to come out of uh, sinful and death uh, condition dear brethren so law actually was good you see it by itself but it did not help uh, mankind it did not benefit mankind of any way at all next what happened if see levi came with him levi was one of the tribe of israel so hence uh, this represents uh, the israel the chosen people of god they were actually god selected people and through them god had actually decided to bless the whole world what did god say to abraham in thy seed the whole world should be blessed all the nations should be blessed so israel was a blessed nation and through israel god had actually planned to bless the whole world of mankind but uh, what happened uh, that one also did not work out dear brethren you see let us read uh, romans 9 chapter verse 4 and 5 romans 9th chapter 4 and 5 who are israelites to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and service of god and the promises five who whose are the fathers and of whom as concerning the flesh christ came who is over overall god blessed for ever amen see these uh, are the chosen people of like israel but uh, the bible says uh, let it be israel or uh, a jew or a gentile you see nobody is justified uh, uh, by god you see so in romans 3:10 it clearly says uh, you see and it is written there is none right as not one so hence uh, the levi the israel nation also could not help uh, the world of mankind to come out of uh, from this uh, death uh, condition because uh, they themselves were cursed hence uh, on the same path the next who came it seems uh, is samaritan we all know very well who is the samaritan if i ask you you will clearly tell me brother this is none other than our lord jesus christ so jesus christ came that way as a good samaritan what did he do huh he helped that man to come out of that condition okay now is there anywhere given in the bible that jesus uh, is a samaritan Yes, we saw in John four chapter where uh, Jesus uh, 
was willing to drink water from a Samaritan. You see? But read this verse. This is very clearly when Jesus is called as a Samaritan. John 848, sister. Huh? John? John 848. I need to take up one minute. You can read from the screen. Yes, brother. John 848. Then answered the Jews and said unto him, Say, we not well that thou art a Samaritan and hast a devil. See, Jesus was called as a Samaritan. <laughs> they also told him that you have a devil. You see, he was an isolated person. They never uh, took him to his fellowship. Therefore, we read in Isaiah 53, see, 3, that he is despised and rejected of men. A man of sorrow acquainted with grief. You see, and we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Samaritans had no fellowship with the Jews. Similarly, Jesus was never, you see, welcomed among the Jewish people, they brand. Therefore, you see, uh, Jesus, uh, you see, is that good Samaritan. What did he do? He came and, uh, you see, healed that wound. And uh, poured out oil and uh, gave him wine and set him on his own vehicle. Now, what is the meaning of this one, dear brethren? You see, first of all, the Samaritan had sympathy on this uh, wounded piece, people, on the wounded person. So, similarly, uh, what does the Bible say? You see, Jesus had compassion on the crowd. And moreover, Jesus came to this earth to die for mankind because he had. Uh, Sympathy on them. In Proverbs 8, chapter, verse 30 and 31, it says that Jesus was uh, actually rejoicing in the habitable part of this earth. And his delight was with the sons of men. Jesus always wanted to live among these people. Hence, when man sinned, he could not, uh, you see, see that pathetic condition of man. Therefore, he had sympathy and came near, he left that heavenly abode, he was ready to sacrifice that heavenly abode and came to this earth, willing to die, you see, for man. Okay, <clears throat> now what did uh, Jesus do? He gave them the oil, you see, oil means what? Holy Spirit. He gave them the wine, wine means what? Doctrine, dear brethren. Therefore, in Isaiah 61, it says, no, the Spirit of God is upon me. He has rented me to preach the good tidings uh, unto the meek. Uh, you see, he has uh, sent me to bind the broken heart. Uh, you see, the broken heart uh, to heal the wounded, to proclaim liberty to the captivity, opening the house of prison. You see, uh, so proclaim liberty, dear brethren, uh, to appoint uh, unto them that mourn in Zion. To give unto them beauty for ashes, oil of joy for mourning. See, oil, garments of praise, isn't it? For the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called a tree of righteousness. So, this is the purpose that Jesus came and he helped mankind come back to God. Now, what did he do? He took uh, that man upon his own vehicle. What is that one? That is a as a donkey. Now, what do you mean by donkey in the Bible? You see, donkey in the Bible means the church. How? You all know very well that Jesus, when he came to Jerusalem, he actually sat upon a donkey and came inside the Jerusalem. He was welcome. You see? Now, how was the donkey welcomed? Everybody put white cloths uh, and put the palm branches and welcome. You see? And the Bible says that no man sat on this uh, uh, donkey. It is a very strange thing that somebody could sit for the first time and it, uh, without any making trouble, this uh, donkey walked very softly without any disturbance. How is it? Uh, dear brethren, usually they actually put the load, the clothes, everything upon the donkey. But that day when Jesus was welcomed, it was sort of different thing. Instead of putting the clothes upon the donkey, that day the entire clothes were before the donkey on the road. It was a red carpet welcome. So it was totally surprised. And he was totally submitted to the Lord 
and he was very happy that everybody welcomed the donkey in such a way usually the smite the donkey is not obedient but here everybody welcomed him so donkey was very submissive and came very silently to jerusalem now you know actually huh, what the people were doing uh, the people were welcoming donkey uh. no 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 people were welcome the donkey people were welcoming the jesus who was actually sitting up on the donkey now who is uh, above us uh, you see huh? who is our head uh? jesus is our head uh. just because jesus is our head we are welcomed isn't it we all are being welcome to your houses uh, to take the classes and all why yeah because not because of us uh, we are all donkeys uh, we are all of no use uh. you see this is the church uh, who is above the church uh, who is head of the church uh? jesus christ it is because of the truth that we are welcomed everyone and answer jesus took this man upon the donkey and brought him to the him now this man came to the you see in where it was treated where he was completely healed upon this donkey so similarly it is through the church that the whole world will get salvation where is it given read acts 15 chapter 14 to 18 acts 15 chapter 14 to 18 ha uh. acts 14 15:14 to 18 Sanyan hath declared <clears throat> I'm sorry how god at the first state visit the gentiles to take out of them a people for his name and to this agree the words of the prophets as it is written after this i will return and will build again the tabernacle of david which is fallen down and i will build again the ruins thereof and i will set it up that is residue of men might seek after the lord lord and all the gentiles upon whom my name is called said the lord who did all these things known unto god known to no unto god all are all his works from the beginning of the world thank you sir see it clearly says you see god first uh, did visit the gentiles to take a name a group of people out of them once uh, this uh, a little flock the lack and fathers are complete immediately what will happen in prince uh, god will build uh, the tabernacle of david israel why so that the residue of mankind the entire mankind but again seek the lord is him sir dear brethren so hence it is through the church once the church is complete that the world of mankind will be restored back to perfection okay now that man brought uh, the wounded person to a inn now, what is a inn now you see that is god's protection the mankind today are uh, under the supervision of god you see god has made a beautiful plan not only for us but for the whole world the bible says the god saw the, the world so much that he gave his only begotten son jesus who so whoever believes in him should have eternal life now this samaritan when he left <clears throat> what did he give he told take this two penny keep it with you if i return i am going to return this way again and i will give you more so what are the two pennies which jesus gave and went at the first advent dear brethren the two pennies are the two coins you see the old testament and the new testament it is a silver coin we know the silver in the bible is the god's word psalms you see told chapter therefore the old testament and the new testament these things were given for the mankind you see so they may you see be healed you see dear brethren what did jesus say if i come again i will pay you you see the you know, bible says no huh? blessed is the man that walk not in the counsel of the ungodly that na- neither standeth in the way of the sinners nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful but delighted is the law of god you see and do meditate day and night dear brethren we also have deuteronomy 6 chapter 6 to 9 where it says that uh, <clears throat> teach thy children about the god's words even as they are sitting even as they are walking even as they are sleeping every time let them meditate this god's words so 
in this uh, scriptures only there was eternal life read sister read john 539 sister john 539 search the scriptures for in them a think ye have eternal life and they are they which testify of me see in the scriptures what is there eternal life so then sir he gave the two coins sir okay now what did the man say if i come again i will surely come again i will pay you extra what does the bible say will jesus come again second time huh everybody will jesus come the second time yes jesus will come the second coming uh, huh is already come no isn't it you see what is the bible says uh, revelation 320 when it says to the seventh church be old and stand at the uh, door and knock if any man hear my voice you know open i will come and sup with him to so jesus at his second advent will give him more give him more means what he gave two coins at the beginning but now he will give more that means what at the second advent of jesus jesus is giving the strong meat in due season to brethren you all remember when jesus was resurrected you see he appeared to the disciples they were all fishing in the sea you see jesus called them to the sea shore and by the time the disciples came already the food was ready so this is the second advent of jesus isn't it the first time the first advent the disciples were fishing the second advent the second time G- disciples are again uh, fishing the harvest work is going on and jesus calls them to the sea shore this time no need to worry first time he did not give food so much of food but second advent he himself is preparing the beautiful and delicious food a very strong food brethren you see at the sea shore where the fishes are separated you see the good and the bad fishes are separated the food is ready you see only thing is that we need to come and eat that is what mentioned in luke 12 chapter 35 to 37 you see where he uh, says uh, that blessed are those servants uh, whom the lord uh, when he cometh shall find watching verily i say unto you he shall gird himself and make him to sit down to meet i will come forth and serve them you see dear brethren jesus himself shall come and serve meat in due season hence what all strong food we eating it is not ours it is our lord who has returned at his second advent and giving this uh, strong meat in due season hence uh, bible is a beautiful treasure jesus himself tells uh, that new and old things will come out of this treasure read matthew 1352 sister matthew 1352 <clears throat> then said he unto them therefore every scribe which is a instructor unto the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is the householder which bride briden forth out of his treasure things new and old you see what did jesus say huh the kingdom of heaven is like unto a household which bringeth forth out of his treasure the word of god old and new from the new testament the old testament bring out meat in due season dear brethren isn't it dear brethren see for so many days uh, what have you been eating uh? isn't it we eating strong food you see instead of uh, eating and uh, drinking the same uh, milk doctrines uh, you see we are now eating strong meat what did apostle paul say isn't it he said in hebrews 6 chapter 1 to 3 let us live out the basic principles of doctrines what are the basic principles repentance huh? you see huh? and laying of the same foundation huh? baptism you see resurrection of the dead uh, eternal uh, punishment judgment these things all will speak if god permits uh, but let us uh, eat uh, and speak about the strong doctrine which really helps us to build christ likeness uh, hebrews 5 14 sister hebrews 5 14 hebrews 5 14 but strong meat belongs to them that are of full age 
even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil you see strong meat uh, belongs to them that are of full age uh, isn't it uh, so as christians we need to grow day by day not just remain in the same way increase in knowledge uh, also that helps us to increase in the uh, likeness of christ uh, who are these uh, people who desire strong meat uh, who by reason of use uh, have their senses exercised to discern good and uh, evil these are the people who are able to discern what is good and what is evil dear brethren so dear brethren this is uh, the strong meat which jesus is giving at the second event after his return so this is the hidden secret about the kingdom of heaven that is given in uh, this parable so who is my neighbor if you see everyone is uh, everybody's uh, neighbor dear brethren may the lord uh, add his blessings uh, to the understanding of his uh, holy words uh, may lord bless uh, all your dear brethren uh, we thank our lord for giving this opportunity may lord uh, bless this words thank you